Say you got clap, say you got clap. Come on now, come on now. Hey, say you got clap, say you got clap. Come on now, say come on now. Hey, got to celebrate life, and that's alright. So hard, they supporting the couples out of these moves. Let me hit snooze, never me to get up. Get bust, I ain't got time to be stuck. You've been the scapula, but it's a mini tickets up. It's been an honor, the blessing, I don't believe in luck. Hey, I'm waiting, There you go, what's up? Oh, what's up? What's up, man? Hold on, I feel like a, I feel like a bum. Hold on. <laughs> hey, it's alright. Y'all got the How's it going? Doing good, man. I'm just, just letting everybody settle in. How you feeling, bro? Good, man. Make sure my camera straight. I'm going to introduce you the proper way. I'm just letting everybody know. <laughs> letting everybody I mean, know what's going on. I mean, LA is hot. Spicy. <laughs> and what, what, what's that whole... Oh, there you go. I see you good. Okay. Yeah, okay. Good, man. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Real good, but it's cool. It's cool. It's, cool. it's, it's all good. Yeah, once again... Southside, Southside Tide. This is So You Got Clout, the podcast. I just want to thank the Atlanta Actors Collective for giving me and my boy Patrick a form. Uh, we couldn't talk to Patrick. He's one of the brightest now of uh, Atlanta, Jacksonville, and L.A. right now. Uh-huh. I've seen my boy on Power, The Quad, on BT, Grey's mm-hmm. and that. And, you know, a, a lot of shows, a lot of movies, Bad Moss, Christmas. My boy mm-hmm. working now. Um. God good. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we're gonna make you look good, man. Just uh gonna ask you about your journey, how how uh how you came from teaching classes in Atlanta to, you know, booking the roles you do now from when you only had five dollars to get to class. Yes, sir. You're spending it to teach people like me, you know what I'm saying, so we can all share our passion together. Yeah. Uh, looking being on power, acting with Lorenz Tate, no more mm-hmm. Omar hard with you doing your thing but I'm proud of you man I'm just glad because I've seen the journey thank you and man you're here now to celebrate you we just gonna talk about your journey like I said yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um everything <laughs> everything That's good. I'm ready I'm ready you know uh, so we're gonna talk to you real quick first of all how you feeling I feel great let me say something it is so hot and El- oh shout out to everybody um uh somebody said hey I work with you on the quad what's up the quad was dope. Um, yeah, what's up, man, Mr. Savage? Uh, all these great people, I appreciate y'all for joining. Everybody, uh, Stephen Ford, like, my, my, my first, like, acting projects ever was with that guy, Mr. Ford. Um, oh. Ever, ever, my first, first started. First, like, first started acting. That was, like, the second short film I had ever done. Brianna in here. What's up, Brianna? So, yeah, we here. We lit. God good. I feel good. Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. So, before we start officially, I just want to give a shout out to our sponsors, uh, Miss Giovanni Samuels. Y'all might know her from um, Freedom Riders, all that. You know, we kind of grew up with Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. She was Mr. Oh, Mo's yeah. Unique. She's dope. Yeah. She's dope. Act and coach. So, if y'all want to go take her class, y'all can follow her at GS Acting Workshop on Instagram. I just want to plug her real quick. Yes, the book room. I see y'all. I love y'all. <laughs> I'm in the house, book a room, fam in the house. Yes, sir. All right, cool, cool, cool. And um, so, shoot, man, we're just going to get into it, man. First of all, how, how, uh, how, how, how are you getting by in the quarantine right now? Like, with everything being shut down, you yeah. have something uh, go all the time. You're like an acting machine. How are you, uh, you know, just make sure you flex that muscle. Right. So, firstly, um, like, I, I, I feel I took this time to, to relax more. I think that we're like, I'll talk for my sp- myself. So I'm so used to just going nonstop and, um, and always trying to find something to do that. It's been a great time to just chill. Um, I went and spent some time with my family and I feel like when the moment came to, to be creative, then like it, it I didn't force it. It just, it just happened. Um, the quarantine, obviously the quarantine stopped stuff for everybody, but like we, the project that I shot my, um, my my pilot that I wrote and this show that I have, uh, we just, we pitched it to Netflix, and they were supposed to have like a follow up meeting with them. We we're supposed to meet with Hulu about the show, and literally, the quarantine happened like on the like I think they locked it laid down the weekend when I was supposed to meet like when we we're supposed to go into Hulu on the Monday. 
So then it stopped. Um, it stopped everything. But like, I feel like it's a perfect time to like get other things together. So like, where it's like, hey, you would have went into this meeting with these people and took this one idea, this one great idea that they're interested in. I can go in and like now I got three to take in there. So um, just finding a way to to um, to just relax, to flow, and to believe in God. Um, and that's what this time is all about for me. Right. I feel that. I feel that. Yep. Good answer. So, uh, how how would you describe, man, the acting scene in L.A. versus the acting scene out here in Atlanta? So, man, to be honest, I think L.A. is more show and tell. I think it's, um, like, cause the reality is that people can book a show and have no experience prior at all here. Um, I think it's the quickest place to make a million dollars. Um, <laughs> but, um, like, I just feel like it is show and tell. I think even, the reality is that people, like, nobody's from L.A., Right? No, nobody's from this place. Like it's it's rare why I meet somebody who's actually from here. So the thing is, people come here and they 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 adapt to the environment that they're in, and they lose originality. So I think when you lose originality, you for you you lose what makes you special, and you become like everyone else. So if you book the if you book a job, if I book a, if if you book a job, and then like there's other guys who. Um, who also live here and like who have who have adapted to the same energy, then essentially you'll all play the role similar. There, there will be nothing that makes you stand out other than the fact that you look handsome or like that or like you're beautiful. Um, it, it, but it's but it's like you lose the the the, the thing that made you you. I feel like. Um, but like I feel like LA is 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 where the opportunity is like a thousand percent more than. I mean I love Atlanta always, but that's just the difference mm-hmm. is that like. LA is more show and tell. The people in Atlanta, like they don't get as much, so they're scrapping for, like they are fighting for 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 crumbs from the master's table, essentially. So it's like when they people like me, when you go in and you grab a, a resident, where it's supposed to be one episode, and you do, and I did ten episodes on that show. Um, like when you grab these small, like these things that like they give you, you try to like make um, make the best impression that you can. Well, you can come here, and then like it may take some time, but you book your project, and then like you know you you. You own, you know. So, I just think it, it just it, it it it's just a difference in like. Um, I, but I think people in Atlanta are much hungrier to me. Like they're, they're much more like um, on the on the really trying to figure it out because they it, it's it's harder to see while you're there. Well, like you come to LA and like at least you can see that it's like oh, there's the studios here, 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 and here. When LA, I mean Atlanta is not that's not the case so much, you know. So, yeah, I feel yeah, because everybody's trying to get. Yeah. In LA, you made it. Say again, you broke up some. I say, you get in LA, you already feel like you made it a little bit. The hunger. Yeah, well, 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 I think it. Even though Atlanta's popping, LA is like, that's Hollywood, you know? So, uh, yeah. You feel yeah. Better. You know? Yeah, I, say the last sentence again. I didn't hear the last part. No, I was saying you feel good just being in Hollywood. So, like, this right. is where film is. Yeah. It's, I'm, you know, you feel a little better being there. I feel new, relatively. Yeah. And, yeah, and the thing is, too, that, that like, here you have a, like, there's, like, it's like you have a visual representation of, of where you want to be. There's a whole street with stars' names on the ground that you can walk by and you can find inspiration in, in like, their names or, like, there's like areas in Hollywood. I find myself in Hollywood a lot, but um, for inspiration. But it's like you have like the best picture winners on like on the walls, and then you got like the stuff. You got their hands in the ground. All these little um, these little things that like that you can find like a sense of inspiration when like you have none. Like visual representation of like inspiration here, where it's like in Atlanta, <laughs> you you drive out to Albert Studio and um, you know like be inspired, but um. But yeah, this Hollywood is just like you. It, it's dope. I mean, you 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 feel it more, you know. Okay, okay, I understand that. Uh, well, we gonna back up just a little bit. You know, what I'm saying we gonna take it back to your roots. You're originally from Jacksonville, Florida. Sure. Um, how did um how did your upbringing in Jacksonville like mold you into wanting to be an actor? Um. Well, I, I think I think that, and and the thing is, like everybody on, like everybody has an opinion about about everything. So I'm mm-hmm. from, um, I just say humble beginners. So I think the Duval, yes sir, Aaron, my boy, you know what it is, Elaine <laughs> Duval. But um, but no, but like where I'm from, 
it's a like humble beginning. So I think like there's this idea in Jacksonville where like everybody knows that like whatever you get, you have to earn that. Like you you have to um like like you have to grab it. Like my little sister is is brilliant. Like she like in order to get a scholarship to go to college, she goes to the University of Florida to go to a great college. She had to um she had to make the grades so she had to get the scholarship because like if you're going to the University of Florida, then like for your parents to have to pay for that it'd be harder. So she made all the A's and like got all the scholarships to then go into like her college pack practically be paid for. So I feel like, like having, a, um, like coming from a humble environment, um, it, it made thing it put things into perspective to like be prepared for some kind of struggle. Um, even when I moved to Atlanta, um, I didn't have a car for the first few years. So I was riding, riding a bike. Like people, like people who know me, you don't know that like riding a bike for, um, like I ride my bike to acting class. I ride my bike to like I had I was doing a play, and I would take my bike, I ride the bike, and I would put it on the front of the on a martyr on a martyr bus, put it on a martyr train, and I would hide my bicycle on the side of the building that we um that we did um the rehearsals, so that way um mm-hmm. nobody saw I was riding the bike, and I was the youngest one on the cast, and when everybody left, I would then go to my bike and then ride my bike back back home. So I think that um like having the upbringing that I had where it's like you, you, you grow or like you fight for what you wish you earn, you earn your keep. Then it's like me riding that bike. I knew that it was a part of a process. I feel like if I, if I had like a view of um, being extremely wealthy and having to go down and ride a bike, it might've hit me just a little bit harder. But, um, but I feel that knowing that like, like my friends, like we would catch the, the, the city bus in Jacksonville or we would walk to each other's houses, like miles to get to each other's houses. And like, I just feel like like living humbly. Um, it made, it makes it easier when um when like stuff with acting got like was challenging in the beginning because like it was so it was as it, it, as fun as it was it was really really difficult in Atlanta. Like now I'm moving to LA. Um, like it, it's 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 a little difficult here as well, but in a different way. But um, God first, and um, like with like a um. Like in the, like humbly, then like um it may, like I'm not easily moved, you know, by things not going my way. Right, right. And you um when you say you kind of grew up in Atlanta too a little bit, right? Yeah, I would go back and forth. My father um he he um my 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 biological father he moved from Jacksonville when I was young to Atlanta, so I would go like during the summer times to my um to his house and I would go back to um to my house. My dad just popped in on the bottom I came in, my dad. But, but yeah. Alright, cool. So uh what when um when would you say like you started first pursuing acting then? Like when did you officially start? Um well I when I, I graduated from from high school in like twenty eleven and then I, um, I went to a, I think right when I moved to Atlanta, I, I, I was interested in acting, but I didn't know nothing about it. So um, I remember my dad being like, oh yeah, you should check out some acting classes. Um, he just like said like, you should go to classes, like cause you can do it, so you should go to classes. And then I think like that in August of 2011 was where like I found Dwayne Boyd, shout out to Dwayne Boyd, Premier Actors Network um, in, in Atlanta. And then I went to his class and then it just became a, uh, um, I think because in Jacksonville it was like it was something I thought I wanted to do when I was young, but it, it's a little bit harder to see it when um, when you don't know anything about it. Okay, I see. Okay, okay we got a question for you. Uh, Fleeky XO asks, when you get a script, what kind of work do you do to prepare? Okay. Hey, if you if you if you're an actor, take you some notes, jot you down some notes. The question was like. Um, it was talking about, she asked, what, um, like, what do I do when I get a script? Right. And just so everybody knows, we're going to have a Q&A at the end of the video, so y'all be able to ask all y'all questions anyway. I tell Patrick everything he knows. Oh, nice. <laughs> you done that? I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I couldn't see who it was, but, uh, I mean, obviously, it's a supporter. I appreciate the support. Yeah. All right, cool. But to answer her question. Um, to answer, answer her question, if she... There she goes. She's back. Fleeky XO. Fleeky XO, the answer to your question. So what I do is, let me pop this up on this. Uh, 
So what I do is, um, um, like I was saying, like if if I'm leading a project, I think it's important to like read it, read the, the the story. Back to the question, right? Um, I think it's important to read the story, read the script as many times as possible to download the information in your brain. And I think I believe that um, like a mem a memorable performance. Yeah. So I believe that a memorable performance comes from like the ability to um, to, to note an entire story, and it looks and if it's a straight line, you find a way to bend it. I think a great actor could just bend the story any way that they want, because the idea is that like we find a way to to take an audience on a ride. So um, for me, I read it as many times as possible, and then I will compare my beginning to my end as far as like the whole story goes. Same even in like an audition, I'll find um, that I will never want my ending to look like the beginning because then there's a lack of level if everything looks the exact same. So I read it as much as possible and, and just try to try things out with the character. Um, even like before, like um, if it's like a callback or like um, testing for a show, then I like to go to a gym and walk on a treadmill with uh, and develop the character's walk and stuff like that. So um, I just try to find them. But the character is always in, it's, it's always in the lines and how like uh, the character responds to um to some to someone else's line or like their reaction to a different line. And it, I think it's like the more that you read it, the more you can picture yourself doing it, and then um, you can see like how you interpret the character and how the character um, will play their own moments. And then I just, I just I, like I just put on the character and then just play the moments how he was playing if he was alive. Yeah, right. You know. yeah. You're right. He lived through you. Um, but, thing that I always to you specifically you Jerry uh everybody down there at the booking room uh it's, it really feels like a home man we got the jacket and stuff but I found the booking room I think pretty early in 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 y'all in y'all's like run mm -hmm. like 2016 I yeah what year was that we started I got Travis with me what year we started 2015 2015 2015, yeah, so I found y'all pretty early, man, and um, I always give credit to the booking room for teaching me, you know what I'm saying, everything I know, because it was like a family, y'all made it like a real family environment. Yeah. Didn't cost nothing to come out. Adverse. Yeah. <laughs> people that love doing what they do, you know, it's always good. And so just, uh, I just want to talk about that and how the idea for the book started. Um, so essentially with the booking room, it was um, my my amazing friend Jeffrey Maya. Um, she she came to me with an idea that she had um I think she had talked to like a few of, of her other friends about it, saying like that she wanted just some actors to meet up and um and like do some work. And we did I think like the first meeting we had like we did it in, in Jeffrey Maya's clubhouse at her apartment. And we may have had like I think the first one we had like fifteen people that came out. And I think like week after week like with social media and people finding out like, oh this way I like oh Pat this is what y'all doing? Then like it went from like fifteen the first week. I think we went to like twenty something, then thirty, then forty, and I think we had like fifty people in like an apartment complex, like in the in the in a in a um in a clubhouse, and then it was too the parking was real crazy, and um, then we had to get a studio, um, so we moved everybody to the studio, and then like we was doing like seventy eighty people in the acting class. It was crazy, but like it was it was great. But that's how it started. It was just like. She came to me and said, like, hey, I think it's cool if we get a bunch of actors together and just um, work. And we were doing it from, like, 7 p.m. to, like, like 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning just acting. And then, like, it would be a lot of people. Then it would whittle down to, like, it would always be, like, 10, 15, 20 of us at the end still hungry to, like, just do some work. Uh, I remember because, you know, you actually did the very first interview this podcast ever did. Uh, some similar <laughs> using cell phones. Yes, sir. It was just an idea. And uh -huh. I remember in that interview, you you brought up how teaching really helped with your memory. Because at the end of every class, people would come to you um, and wanted to know how they did. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to give genuine feedback, so you have to actually remember what they're talking about. Uh, and I just want to know what that felt like, like the toll reiterate like, the toll that took on you and how like how much you gave at the peak. That's a good question. It's a great question. Um 
All right, I know. That's a good question. So, at, at first, and at first, I think all throughout teaching people, even coming to LA, I teach at this place called Actors Play LA. And um, the reality is that it's like there is um, a, a, a small group of people like teaching like all of these, uh, like over 50 people week after week after week. And I feel like um, like to uh, like to get involved in someone's performance, it's like they're inviting me into their brain. They're inviting me into like their vulnerable space and allow me to take that and manipulate um, to just make it make it better. So I feel like like carrying so many people's truths and, um, and 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 as much stuff as people bring to like to the performance or whatever, and like like and because we're really in charge of like of of making people feel safe when they come into this space of doing something that they want to do for the rest of their lives. They feel like. And then, like taking their life experience, and then trying to teach them how to um, apply that life experience to um, to a scene that they read, and then also find a way to make it funky. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like, like the toll that it took on me, I feel like at nights I always slept long on Monday mornings. I always slept late on Mondays, to like nine, ten on on, mon- on Mondays. Where I, normally at that point I was waking up at like five, six a.m. Um, I would always be really exhausted, but it was always, it, the fellowship was so good and being with good people was so great that you don't mind it. And like, we didn't get paid for it doing the book and roll. Like we just, I, I didn't get paid for that, like ever. So just like being able to be there for people and like, just really gain friends and gain, um, uh, what's the word? Gain, um, like uh, other cra- other craftsmen in, in this art. It, it's just it's fun to watch people do things, and I learn from the new people. Like when somebody is fresh and they're new, uh, like my boy David Busby. Um, he came his first week on these Gucci slides with feathers in them, and um, he moved from LA to Atlanta, and like he just had this like raw um, like energy, and like obviously he worked a lot now in like the past few years, but just getting the chance to like watch people's first moments. Um, I could take it and like as much experience that I have, and just like um, grab their originality and like grab their um, the, the, the spontaneousness in the moment, so like the eagerness to just jump in, um, you know. So it it, it, it did take a toll um, overall, but it but it wasn't anything that was like oh, oh my gosh, this burden is so hard to carry. Oh wait, Jesus, you know. But it was cool. I, I see. So I see somebody say late as nine a.m. I got some work to do. That's a that that's a funny comment because that that actually gives me um, another oh right mm-hmm. because it takes a lot to be successful right um, mm-hmm. it's just being talented you got you got to be disciplined always looking interview you got to embody a successful person and so right. get another like really go into what makes you you know as like your routine like what you do and stress how that helps you um, in your craft <laughs> I, 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 so I think my routine has changed throughout time I know that like because if for years it was like literally um, I like waking up extremely extremely early um, to um to then try to essentially find things to do throughout the day, you know, but like really waking up early and I made it a point to like watch this as many interviews and just like as many movies and really like people talk about people watching and it's like, cool, you can watch people, but it's, it's the interaction with people that like you learn from. Um, I think that the interaction that I have with, um, with, uh, with Jared, for example, who's, who's, who's with the Booker Room. Um, like when I did Michael on the resident, it was the, the interaction with Jared, and watching how Jerry responded to moments. And then, cause the character is me, but it was like, I knew that like when I auditioned, it felt like a kind person like Jerry was. And uh, there was this um, like golliness that he had that I have, not that I have. Um, and it's like these little moments with people. So it's like for me to just watch people do things, it, it does, it never really worked for me. But to then interact with those people, if I'm like, like watching a, um, like somebody on the street yelling and yelling and talking to themselves, to just watch them is cool, but then to go and then inter- interact with them is where I get a, um, is where I learn. So I totally forgot your question. Oh, it was about like my routine. Um, yeah. But it, it really was just. Exactly. The discipline. Yeah. It, yeah th- like, I think, because it's like, if you really want to do something in the beginning when you have nothing, you got to do more, 
right? Like, that's just what it has to be. Like, when I was saying I had to ride a bike to, um, having to ride a bike to get to, like, um, acting class, ride a bike to get to play rehearsals. Like, it's like, if you really want to do it, then you'll go that far. Um, or, like, you'll just be around. Even acting class, my, te my coach used to let me just come to the class and just sit in the back. Like, finding a way to just be a part of anybody's short film or any, be on anybody's set. Just like a little knacking little the little gnats that fly around. Like if acting is, is the is a person, I'm like a little gnat just always around them trying to find my way um in to just learn as much as I could. Going on the set, like people go on set, they go and then they'll hang in their trailer and then they'll come back out when it's time to shoot. Power, I did not go in no trailer. Power, I was on the set when it wasn't even time for me to shoot. I wanted to watch Omari Hartley perform. Um, so it's like like finding moments like that to just um to jot notes down. Even movies, like my managers would, my manager would call and say, hey, can Patrick shadow you throughout the movie when he's not shooting? So it's like, in days I could be sitting in my hotel, I would go on set and I would just watch. And I've been doing that since the, since the very first movie I, I, the very first movie I ever did. Like it's been like since, since I did like, Rings was my first movie, the Ring 3 movie. Like since that movie on, it was just this thing of like wanting to be around and watch how um, everybody does what they do or like find a ways to like now that I create projects to just steal from um, a gaffer like oh he likes the, he likes the room this way okay let me take my phone and I'll record the way that they like set up the lights or like I record the way they do this or record the way they do that uh, to watch how like uh, uh, they create a whole set but I think it's just like a um, like like a routine like if you get up early and you just do as much as you can. You watch the, the actor that you're studying. You watch every movie that they've ever done. And, like, you just break it down. And you run it back and you run it back. I don't watch. I watched Seven Pounds for, like, for, for two months. That was the only movie I watched for two months. Seven Pounds. Um, just for vulnerability. Um, Denzel movies. I watched, man. <laughs> I watched every Denzel movie a billion times. But, like, at one point when I didn't have money for acting class, that's just all I did. I just watched this man, like, and like found his small moments and just try to find a way to um to learn even when I I didn't I couldn't afford to go to somebody's class and learn. Whew. John, yeah. I see you, my boy. I love you. I like that. That was a good. That was a good point. That was a good point. Okay, so we're gonna fast forward a little, a little bit to um you, uh, agent. TV more. So, uh, explain to people what the difference between a manager and an agent is. So, um, so I think uh, the difference between to me, uh, in my experience, is like an agent. The um, the manager manages, uh, um, like they have hands on everything. So if it is if it is me trying to get into the room to, to see a certain casting director, I can call my manager and say like, "Hey, I want to get in for this project." Power is the perfect example. I I love the show. I said I want to be on that show. I said, "Give me an audition, even if it's just one line. Like, just give me on the show." So then it was just something for her to watch out for, and then um, and then getting the audition, and then flying to New York myself, and then um, and then end up booking the role. But I think like a manager has just a hand in everything that you do. Where an agent will go in and they'll, you know, in the beginning, they'll negotiate until you get um, an entertainment lawyer or, or whoever to negotiate your deals. But the management, I feel like it's the one that um, that that just reaches out a little bit further to create connections um, where like an agent, because an agent, they have so many other clients. And it's like, granted, that's like your agent. That's like you have your point person and that's your agency. But like a manager is like that, that person who I feel like goes the extra mile and does anything else that needs to be done. Um, like helping you if you need to shoot, like shooting out of town. What hotel is it gonna be in? Hey, I need a, I need a, um, I'm doing this kind of movie. I need, can I get a kitchen in, a, in my hotel? Can we get, can we find a hotel with a kitchen in it? Or like all these little bitty details. I feel like that the manager is the one who will go in and just, um, make everything smooth so that way I don't have to um, think about anything other than like the, the creation of, of the character. And that is all. Um, we're like the agent. And, you know, book, we'll book the, you know, find an audition, send it to you, you book that track, boom, and then you move on from that point. But, like, I feel like just a manager is more, like, on the ground with you. That's why people love their manager so much. It's like they in the dirt while you're trying to figure it out. Okay. Now, I want to ask you, uh, because the first time, like I said, that we did this, in, uh, it was almost uh, and part of the reason I wanted to start doing that is when I realized that even though 
you know, we may not be famous yet. Everybody has an incredible story. I seen you on, on this show, I think Kelly, the Kelly talk show, something like that. And you were telling yeah. on how. And it's one of my favorite stories I've ever heard. It's very inspiring. Say, if I didn't get that, I probably wouldn't be doing this podcast now. So if you could for me one recap how you got the role on Power. And it was the, your other TV role. I want to get into the resident and all that. But first, I want to get out of the way. Okay. All right, so Power. Hello? You good? All right, cool. So Power was, you can hear me? Yeah, you good. All right, cool. So Power, um, I got the audition for Power um, from my manager. And I was really excited about doing a sh about auditioning for it. But I was in Atlanta. And I had to go to, um, I had to go to, um, and, and, and this should be like this tension course. Oh, right here, over, over across there. Over that, that's up, that's up by the door. So, um, um, so yeah, so, so we got an audition for Power, and then I had the audition in New York, I think, the next day, or uh, it was the next day. So what happened was, um, I didn't have the money to, to even do Power, but I just spent, like, all my last dollars to go and fly out to, to do it, so... Um, so I booked my flight, boom, everything's good. So I get to, thank you. I get to the, um, I got to the airport. No, 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 no. I was on my way to the, oh no, yeah. So I get to the airport and I go to scan my, um, scan like with your phone, like scan the code um, on the little kiosk and it didn't, and it didn't work. So then they made me go back to the, like go to the front and get a, um, get it printed out. So I ran to the front, it was Frontier. So I ran to the front, got it printed out. Go back through, they let me kind of cut through the TSA line. So while I'm running up to my gate, they close the door and the gate and it's like, you can't, you can't get in. So finally I couldn't get in. I went to the bathroom and um, I, I cried in the bathroom. Like I sat in like a stall, like a movie. I went to a stall and, 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 and just, just boo, boo cried to myself for a second. Um, and then, it, look, so, so in my brain, um, I remember hearing, Yo, God is so real. I, I remember hearing, like, like, are you going to give up that fast? That's exactly what I heard. Are you going to give up that fast, right? So whether it was me or whether it was God, I heard something. So I ended up, mm -hmm. I left out, I washed my hands, and my face was all red, and it was all puffy. So I think I, like, put on some shades or something. I see that, like, I was crying real bad. So I'm walking out. I text uh, the person who gave me a ride. I text her. I'm like, yo, uh, can you come pick me up? She comes. She picks me up. I get in the car. And like she leaves the airport, and as she's leaving, like I'm like turned towards like the window, and I'm crying like this. So I'm crying, and um, and then um, I don't know why I had the motivation to just like I, I just I just felt something. So I told her to st I said stop. So she stops the car, and I'm like I said hey um like I had like a little bit of money left on my, like left, so I went on like skip lag. I found a flight. I said here my bank account is overdrawn. Can you put this money in your account? And um, can you put this money in your account? And um, and then just let me know because like it ain't go it ain't gonna work in my account because my job is uh, it's too it's too backed up. So she so she says cool. She drops me off. I say hey Siri, where's the closest train station? To some random spot she dropped me off at, and it happened to be right underneath a train. So I walk up, I get on the MARTA train, I'm on the train, and then I went ahead and booked the ticket online and when you book a ticket online through a travel like through the travel website or whatever it doesn't totally block you from buying it it just kind of holds it even if the money doesn't go through so i held it um i ended up getting to um like getting to like getting back to the airport um i walk up to the to the desk the girl calls me and says like hey um hey you went through i said cool um and then when i get to the uh to the kiosk the lady says like when's the last time you bought like when'd you buy the ticket i said like 10 minutes ago and she's like, um, she's like, well, it may not work. It may not, it may not go through that fast. So I said, I don't have that option. So I go in a little kiosk, type the numbers in. It didn't pop up. I'm like, dang. And then literally, like maybe like ten seconds later, it says, Bing! and it pops up my name. I click it, grab my ticket, run, hop on a flight, fly to New York. I got to my audition 15 minutes before it was time for me to go in. With those 15 minutes outside, I call my mom on the phone. I said, pray with me, and I prayed outside. Uh, she prayed with me. I went. 
um, of the elevator. I got off on the wrong floor, got off on the wrong floor, and then went into some random office building. I said, hey, you guys know what the auditions are? They said, yeah, they're up one more floor. I'll walk you. So this lady walks me. She says, um, I really hope you get it. Um, like, I really, really hope you get it. I said, thank you so much. And I think I said, like, God bless you some Door closes, go up. I went in the room, did one line. It was one line for power, one line audition. So I went in there, did one line. I was in there for like no more than like five minutes and then left. And then like, I think like a few days later I found, and then I couldn't even afford to get back home. I had to call my dad and um, try to find a way because I had no money to get home. Got home and then um, a few days later I found out I booked it. And I just, I like cried so hard because like that was, I, that was all I had. And I think, man, it was, it's, just, it's all I had. It was all the money that I had. And I did it. Like, I, I did it, and I ended up, like, it was one episode. It was possible to get three episodes with power. And, um, and then end up having, like, some of the, doing some of the best work of my career on that show. And, um, yeah, somebody said it was for you. It definitely was for me. So, but I, I believed in God. Like, I, I believed in, like, I believed in what I heard. I believed in, like, I believed in the voice that I heard when I was crying in the stall, when I thought that that was it. Like, I, I believed in that, in that voice. And I went for it, you know, and it's even more dramatic when you're there, but obviously it was just me being there by myself. But, um, but yeah, that's the story. I see you too. Okay, cool. I'll, dang, I don't even remember where you were when you first started going out. But you don't right, I, I think people heard me telling my story. They, they, they felt my vibe. Right. <laughs> we got enough. Okay, so since you told us how you got to power, um, how, what was the experience like being able to work with, you know, the people like 50 Cent, Lorenz Tate, Amari Harvey? What was the vibe on the set? That ran of memories just tells the whole the whole rundown on being on the power set. Yeah, I think that, um, and I mean, I think, I, I just, I remember like the, the first day, I just remember like, um, because like these are people who've been doing this for such a long time. Like Lorenz Tate was, my first scene was with him. So I watched him like run his lines with his phone to his ear he would run his lines and walk and i was like okay that's how he does it and um i mean it was it was fun for me like the first the first two episodes that they were like cool uh but the first one was more like to just watch what was happening the second one i think i had a i had a scene where i like it was just me and omari um but i just never made i, I never i don't feel like i ever sat in it for myself except for like the big scenes that i did but everything else i just tried to just watch everybody else i just tried to watch um like how everybody was when they came on set. More from like a, a, a Lee's perspective. Uh, we're back to, oh yeah, yeah. Um, more from like a Lee's perspective, like watching um, how Omari runs his set. Like he's number one on the call sheet on that show. What does it look like when somebody's number one? Like how do they act? Like what do people like? Uh, like, like what do people not like, you know? So it was fun to like have moments where I bounce lines with them and like learn just like how they operate doing this for such a long time. And one thing I did learn is that like it's just so much it's so relaxed. Um, everybody there, um, um, they they're always it's it's always relaxed. Even in the most like 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 the scene where I like robbing the club and stuff like that, all this crazy stuff. It still was just such a, a, a um like like um it was it was it was it was relaxed, but it was focused on moments. So what we did was we would we would um bounce lines off each other really fast. Um, Omari talks fast, just like I talk fast. So we'll sit and do like a fast line through. Line, 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 line really fast. And then what we'll do is we'll find where um, where um, it is that we feel what we feel and how we feel it. So like, I think at one point, like um, like Omari was just like, um, you got to scare me right here. He was like, hey man, we do this, like you have to scare me, like naturally. So even in the show you, you can watch where I like say certain lines twice, it's because of like who Ghost is um, like, isn't naturally afraid, but, um, and he knows that I'm not going to do anything crazy. He thought I wasn't, but, um, <laughs> but then there's like this, um, like, like, like he, like I had to punch it even harder sometimes just to be authentic in the world and more just than just to scare them. It was just like to scare, uh, 200 extras around you, you know what I'm saying? Like up in the balcony and everybody has to be literally, um, afraid that I will kill them, you know? So, sure. um, so yeah, I think like the, the 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 one thing I remember was just like watching how like they play moments and watching how they how he plays with the camera. Like he's really good at um, if I could prop this up, hold on. Like he's good at where he will he'll do a scene and if if uh, if there's two cameras shooting from these two directions, 
and the scene happens this direction and like his ending, he'll turn out and he'll play it to the last, to the other camera. So that way you don't have to do a whole new camera setup. It's, it's really genius um, when, you, when, you, when you watch it happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like to know that like, hey, yeah, like we're gonna have to do a whole nother setup. A whole nother setup does what? It's gonna take another 15 minutes. It's gonna take another 20 minutes. So instead of having to move all these cameras this direction, I could just rotate my body at the ending and then let them catch that last, the final moment um, when I'm just turned out that way. So I just like watch little moments of like how they would just soak up the camera when it was right in their face. So what, so I, I guess you could say, would you say that the big thing from was just basically how to lead a show? Yeah, yeah just like that for me, that's what it was. It was like, how does a, cause I think at, that, at this point, I haven't been on a lot of like shows where like the number one person was, was black. Um, I've done a lot of, um, um, a lot of other shows, a lot of um, beautiful other shows, but like where it's a black lead, not too often. So it's like just to watch, like even like like one day, like he was just a little frustrated, and just like watching him, like just like like watching how like people handle the set when like they have something to do, when they got lines to remember, like all of these different things. Every set, I think I just like really pay attention to the leads because like that's like in the next few years, like that's gonna be the same seat I'll be sitting in. So it's like, how can I be the best um, performer, but then also like the best person to work with, so that way like they know that like he's just is no like. like because it's all a team. It's all a team. And you never want I feel like an actor never wants to make themselves seem bigger than the, than the rest of the team, you know? Because then that's like, that's where, that's where the, the lines get murky and stuff like that. So, I mean, I just watched to, to just see, like, how, like, the OG, OGs do it. Cool. So, and, and, but did you ask producers, the writers, the showrunner, Courtney Kemp, did you interact with, uh, did you get to interact with the people behind the scenes as much? I, with the um, with Courtney Camp, I did. We ate lunch together, so I got a chance to talk to her, um, some of the writers. But I think like that, the last episode I was on, it was such big sequences that um, and we had to, we rehearsed a, a lot beforehand for the big for the big scene that um, like we we all found. Um, uh, I think it was just important for me to just um, have have dialogue to know like what they saw, but it really just gave me the the, the freedom to just go wherever I felt um, with the character. But, like, as far as, like, that, um, I would connect. But I wouldn't, like, you know, just, like, talk to people for no reason. Like, you know, or just, like, try to talk because they go, oh, we're next to each other. But, like, it was always with with work being, like, the goal of, like, um, and I always try to give ideas. I never like to be the actor that's, like, asking, like, 100 questions. Like, hey, how should I do this? I mean, they hired you for a reason. So have an opinion about it. And um, so I always would give, like, my ideas or, like, give, like, my thought and um, see how they reacted based off of my thought, and um, and I just went from that point. Yeah, more gems, more gems. Uh, I, I, would, I would say, would you say that or most how is the role you played so far, you personally, as an actor, would be on The Resident? Yeah, The Resident, definitely. Going to everything. Micah, Mina, the whole love triangle, you, her, Malcolm Jamal, Warner. Uh, first of all, what was it like being on the show uh, ran by? Because on this show, uh, we give everybody their props, but we definitely give black women their props. And behind the scenes, they're they killing it right now. So, mm -hmm. Ron has definitely been shouted out on this podcast before. So, how does so being on her set multiple times? How does Shonda Rhimes? How tight is that shit? Well, Shonda Rhimes is Grey's Anatomy. That's why I meant Grey's Anatomy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, and, and, I'm starting to we were going to go into the resident. I want to start with Grey's Anatomy. Accent. I was thinking it. <laughs> <in my, laughs> Let me start over. I said the wrong one. You you and, you and your wife were expecting. You said? Expect. Was, it, was, it what I, was it what I was expecting? No, you and your wife were expecting. In the storyline, you and your wife were expecting. Right. Got in the car accident. And long story short, she ended up losing the baby. Um, speaking, of, I'm glad that we transitioned here because this is why I want to transition here because I was listening to Amari Hardwick talk to Ti on expeditiously, and he was saying how only a go only a father goes. Him being father in real life, he felt like he had to play that because he had something wrong. I know the name of the game is acting, but 
since you since you're not a father, that scene where they gave you your baby and your hands, like where did you fall from that emotion? Like where did that emotion come from? Because you did what I like to call violence. Right, it was so real. You you look devil, you look drained, everything perfect. The scene came off excellent. So with you not where did you so um so that that scene there was a um uh and first of all like going into a set like that like a well run show for like that was like season the season fifteen um I knew that um like I know that they know what they're doing already so like when they like shows that's ran for a long time like I did, I did an episode of NCIS they know where the cameras going to be set up at they've been in this in this room before that we shooting in so um. What I did was, um, the because the reality is is that like he has he, the baby doesn't the baby um, he knows that the baby's not gonna make it before that scene he knows, so he just got a chance to see it but he already knew that the baby that the baby wasn't gonna make it they just said do you want to hold him, um a, a the dead baby, so like the idea um so what I did was I just created the, this this child I created my child like and like all these things about his name. First name, last name, what I wanted him to be when he grew, grew up. I just like detailed everything about what I wanted him to be. Everything was about what I wanted him to be. Um, and then, like in creating this thing, I got I like as a father cr connects to their child and what they what they see for their child. Um, like I just connected into like the real like the future that this child would would would, would eventually have. And then when it was time to to hold the baby, it was then that future being ripped away from me. So then the, the, the tears and the reaction came from the fact that like, like that I won't have that thing anymore, even though like I believed for myself for nine months that like, um, that it, it, it was real. I'd already saw him when he was 18. I'd already saw him when he was 25. I'd already saw the new car was going to buy him. I already knew that I was going to, like, I was going to take him out to play football on Saturdays. I was going to get him on the Pop Warner team. I was going to have him play in, in high school. Then I was going to like give him no choice if he wanted to play in college or not. Like, I'd already did all, all that work on paper, like just like just um, like in a journal, and it's such a small, it's just a guest star, but it's like just to create all that world. And then when I got when we shot the scene, I had a jacket that like somebody like it was there was a jacket that I just covered myself up with, and I was like on like I think I was on a ground somewhere like next to the cash chair, and I just was just crying real bad. Um, and then um, I took it off. We got ready to do the scene. We did it. And then, like the, the like they just everybody was just so respectful. They were, they were just really quiet for me, and because uh, they saw it was in a moment before I got there, so they knew that I was like they knew I was ready for it. And um, then, like I think, like the the crew, like the crew, the director would come and she would just whisper. She didn't talk loud to me. She just whispered in my ear what she like. Like, can you just lift your head up? Cause like the camera's shooting like from below. No, no, the camera's shooting here. So it's like a moment where the baby's here. So like I can see the baby here. So she would say, can you lift your chin up? But just like small notes that she would just whisper from like far enough where like I could hear it. And then I wouldn't even respond a lot. I'd just say, mm -hmm. and that was it. Because I can't, I can't leave that world. I can't, not right. Like I, cho I choose not to leave the world. So um, I would just like say, oh, like, mm -hmm. and then like she would go and then they say action and just roll it. And then like it would, it would just, I, I think, and I think when we did it that day, so many takes, but I think I felt it so much that it was like take after take after take. It was just they were just boom, 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 boom. That was dropping like I like 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 it was a little dude in there putting with a little sprinkler in there. So it worked. It was a good day. It was really emotional, and um, but like but the the emotional part like to connect to you know I'm not a father was the, the was the belief and like the reality that this guy was about to have a, a kid that he saw the future of already, and then he couldn't because like when I saw that baby. Then it was over. With. I think when when they brought the baby in, it was like a little r r like fake baby. But when they brought the baby in, I lost it. I lost it. When it, when it took baby out the first time, I lost it. Anytime the baby was near, I lost it. I had to turn the other direction because I couldn't see it. Because it's like then my brain is my brain is just connected to the fact that like that's my child that's yeah. gone. So like, I just couldn't I couldn't even um couldn't look at it. So you you were able to maintain that level of intense every take you hit it every time yeah but see the thing is too like when when and i think for every actor i think it's like it's like a it's like milestones like early like i think at one point i did a um i did a movie where it was just like a funeral scene it wasn't about me it was about somebody else and other other people's moments 
but I was like in this movie I did, I was like a supporting lead and there was a funeral scene and like one of my teammates had died. And that day, that day, I think we did 17 takes where I like, for 17 straight takes, I cried with no camera on me for 17 takes. From, for me, for myself. So that way like the reality is that like every moment beyond this moment of doing this movie, like every moment past this moment, um, I can do it again. I can do it again and I, and I believe it for myself. So once I believe it, like um, it, th I'm not blocked by the fact that it's like, oh, what if I don't feel it? What if I don't feel it? Because I didn't feel it that day. I did it 17 times. I didn't feel it that day, but it was there because I'm I, I trained myself to be able to do this, you know. Okay, so how did you get to that point, man? Because a lot of people, they they have trouble even sh shedding tears for one being able to keep that. So how long did it take you to master? But one part two to my question is, how long does it take you to get back centering yourself after you go? I'll answer part. I, I'll answer part two. Part two first. Um, to get back, I, I mean, I'm a funny person in general, like a really light-hearted person. So I just laugh back. Like I'm not gonna like. I, I think sometimes, like, no, I, I think it's hard to not come back on a like if 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 you're just if you know where you are. One thing I used to do at the book room was I used to just, um, even at actors play now where I teach, like there'll be moments where I say like, hey, just like in therapy, I'll say like, what, like, like, like rub the chair that you're sitting on. So like you, you ground yourself to know that, hey, my name is Patrick Walker. I'm in Los Angeles, California. I am in my house. Um, I'm sitting on a black chair on a, on a tile floor. So that way I'm, I'm, I'm present where I am. So that way it's like, I'm not living a moment anymore. But. I just laugh. I try to just laugh everything off and just like have a good time. Because at the end of the scene, if you kill it, they're going to come up and say like, ooh, boy, you killed it. And then you're just like, yeah, and you, you smile and, you know, for me, I smile and I just um keep on rolling. What was the first, first part of that question? How, how, how long did it take you to master that? Oh, um. I don't think it's. I don't think it took a long time because, like, I remember doing some stuff early, where for me, it's just the more that I I believe it, um, it's better for me. Like when I really believe the circumstance, then I'm in. Like I trick my brain into in this world. That's why I think it's dangerous for actors sometimes, because the reality is that like, um, like even on the resident, there was a like like he's going like the character's going into into surgery to have a heart transplant, right? Like the reality that like I I may not make it past this surgery, like that thought has to live it lives in my brain, you know, for like all day, you know, and it's like I think I've been doing that since early on. So it's like it's not even that I had to master it. It's just I had to learn like levels of it, like how to play it. Like okay, it's like if in real life I'm I'm cry like some moments I like use substitution. Like if it like my uncle died a few years ago, so like. Some moments, if like I think about that, like it'll get generated. But the reality is, if I think about like my grandma just passed like three months ago, if I think about that, then like I can sit here and boo cry on this, on this, on this live with you right now. But if I'm doing it for a scene and I have that thought or I have that feeling, then I have to find a way to just like, like hold it because like you can't like, ah, ah, you know, like on camera. So you gotta <laughs> find a way to, to to make it um work because it's about like who is receiving the information that you're trying to give. Because um, it's all about the audience at the end of the day. It's not, it can't be b about me. It's like, how is the audience going to interpret this thing? Like, how would they catch? Um, like, can they get what I'm, are they getting what I'm trying to dish out? So, and everything, and if, and if, we, if for actors, out of all the 32 people, shout out to y'all for listening. If actors, like, when it comes down to emotion, if you breathe from the diaphragm, you naturally, like, that's when yawns come. Like, it's, it's, it's in the, I think when people understand their body, so like like my coach, uh, like Troy Rowland, really great coach. He will have um, he'll have us sit and just breathe from the diaphragm, and then you use your thought. So if I'm breathing from like my like my stomach, and then I think about something, then the tears just it's just gonna come because like the breathing is already accessed along with that thought. Um, and then if you really just want to cheat it, if you like don't even if you ain't feeling it one day, or you totally want to cheat it, then um, like the breathing also accesses the um. Uh, like a yawn. Like if I hold my breath, I'll yawn and then to yawn long enough that like tears are gonna well up in my eyes. You know, it's like you can find ways to 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 play with it. But um 
But for me, it'd take a long time to master it just because, like, I'm really good at imagination. So what was it like? Um, like I said, so what was it like being on like a Shonda Rhimes set like that? So back to, what was it like being on that set? What? It, well, Shonda wasn't there, you know, which I love that she was there because she would have saw some heat going down. To be honest, but um, yeah. but she was. But it, it, what's that again? A couple more episodes. All oh, right, 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 right. So um. I think it's just a, it's a well oiled oil, oil machine. Like they know, like everybody knows what they're doing, and they know how they're gonna do it already. Um, so it was just it was easy. And the thing is, like, it's, it benefits when you do your own work, when you're working on your own projects or another project. Because the reality is that it's like I was already working on another like move, something else, then I stopped, and then, then like I went and did the and then I went and did Grey's Anatomy. So I knew like, hey, this ain't my house. I'm just a guest here. I'm a guest though, so I'm just a guest. So I came in, I'm like, all right, I know they need these emotions, they need this, 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 and that. I'm going to do this to make the episode spicy and did some cool stuff and then just, like, did it and then and it left. But that's just how I saw it. And then they, Grey's Anatomy's, um, like, producer, like, is the, like, he was the guy who worked on Grey's Anatomy, he's the EP for the resident. So, like, he gave me the go-ahead to go over to do Grey's Anatomy. And Grey's Anatomy already knew, like, they had already knew what, they had already, um, like they knew who I, they like were I had already greeted me when I got there very kindly and knew that I was in a resident. So um hey everybody who's saying hello. Um well, uh, but this, podcast. Yeah. So they greeted me um so well that it's like I felt comfortable and going in and just like doing what I need to do. And I didn't make a big deal out of it. I just l stayed in the moment, lived in it, worked and then left. Right. Okay. So now we can go back to the Get your own little storyline going with a love triangle, you and Shawnee Wood and, and Malcolm Warner. So, what was it like um, on the resident going back, having a storyline? Now you have a little bit more busy. Whereas, like on a show like Great Web, so kind of involved in the storyline, not so much. Now you're like in the forefront. What is it like interacting? being a love interest to one of the main characters. I think it was great. Like the um it was great. I, and the the reality is that like I think like my first episode that I did, we shot and this is for all thirty four people watching. Super this is dope. The first episode we shot all of my days. Like we I was like guest star for episode two and it had we had a double we had a two-day premiere. So, like, episode, season one, episode one was on, like, a Tuesday. Season one, episode two was on a Wednesday. So, it's a back-to-back -back premiere. And um, we, I knew that the, that the episodes had to hit hard. So, um, what what happened was we had shot all of my footage um, for, like, episode one, episode two. And then, like, I think, like, two weeks had passed. And then they end up cutting a different scene of somebody else. And then they end up writing me, a, writing me like, I had, like, a, um, a scene where I was in a classroom. And they gave the character more story. So instead of just being like a guy in a hospital, like they then took me outside the hospital and the audience saw like where I worked at and they saw that he was a teacher. So um, I think like once, like I nailed it that day and like those, uh, like the first, the first set of days, like they had trusted me enough early on. And it was, it's an early show. So like they're, they're, they see a good actor and, or they see good actors and they're like, okay, they'll be here. Okay, we can use this guy and like keep him going. So I'm like the director of the first episode was like, um, was like, uh, he says, um, like they're gonna. He took me to the writer and said, "Hey, y'all need to bring him back. Like we we need to bring we need to bring this kid back." On like on the first episode, and he did, um, yeah. And that director did. Um, he directed uh, uh, Denzel in uh, uh, um, Bone Collector. He did a movie Bone Collector with Denzel and Angelina Jolie. So I'd already wanted to impress him. But, um, just because I saw what he had done already, and I but like I just let it go and just had a good time. And then from that point, they gave me more episodes. And the more and more that it grew, was the more that they started to write for Patrick. Like the people there would follow me on social media, and they would see like what they saw, like how I was. And then next thing I know, the character is 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 very much moving how Patrick would normally move. And um, and it became easier as time went by. Yeah, I hear you. Dang, every time we get a good flow going, that's your phone. See.
You you an Android over there? It was you the first time. Nah, actually it's an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> he said it was you the first time. It was you the first time. <laughs> so hot in LA, bro. Dang. Yeah, it's a hot in Atlanta too. So, uh, hey man, we um just got a couple more questions. Uh, okay, so, cool. you know, we keep getting interrupted by the technical difficulties. I just really want to touch on your TV journey and you getting all these roles and how it felt, your experience of being on all these sets. Uh, but I do still want to do a little Q&A if anybody got any questions. Um, please uh, give me about, man, about two or three more questions. We'll get to everybody else's questions, then we'll just end the live. But um, finish, go ahead talking about your experience on The Resident and, like, having that storyline. How, um, how you feel about it? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it was, um, yeah, but it was just as as the, um, like, as episodes went by, I think they, they saw that I could um, handle it, especially because emotionally, the first episode was so emotional that um, the more, uh, okay, I see that, I see, okay, I see those questions. Boom, 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 I'm going to come. We're going to answer them after I answer this one. Um, um, I think early on they, they could see that I could handle the emotional, um, emotional things. So like it was pretty emotional because like we really watch a character go through a heart surgery, then like he's better, and then we see him like having sexual intercourse with like in in a, in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Then he get, has to have another heart surgery. Then the season two is him recovering from this heart surgery, and then him proposing to the girl, her saying no. So we kind of watched him throughout like all of these um, situations of. Um, of really, essentially, the character is trying to. Um, he's living. He's he's speeding up everything. Like he asked her to, to to marry him to like to marry him by episode fourteen on Valentine's Day, um, after he had only known her uh, essentially for like I think maybe like a, a couple of months, maybe like a year by that point. And it was yeah. it's, it seems pretty fast for her because she's focused on um, for my character. Like you just survived death twice, so um, you know like. Beating it, beating death twice. By that point, you just you just yeah. wanna um, you wanna move on with your life. But I do feel that um, yeah. they gave me more um, throughout time because they felt that I could um, handle it, and it was just such a good working relationship with them. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, uh, like I said, that that's pretty much all my questions. Oh, like I said, one more question. Mm -hmm. I asked everybody this on the show: What sure. is your dream role? My dream role right now will be only because like, I know what direction I want my career to kind of move in. Not even kind of, I, want, I know where I want to, where I want to play. Yeah. I would love to do something that, um, that is um, like, like I wrote a show, I wrote a show for myself. Like the project I wrote for myself is my dream role. Um, like the show Chariot that like prayerfully Netflix picks it up or uh, Hulu picks it up or a great network picks it up. Go but, ahead, um, Chariot. Yeah, Siri. Yes, yes. Right. Check out this is a real on my page, but um, so my dream role has always been something that would have meant some kind of salesman, some fast talking salesman, um, like that kind of like those kind of characters was like my dream character, my dream role, and it's like I'm doing that now. And like before the quarantine, I was supposed to, I was supposed to do a movie. We're gonna do it after the quarantine. I'm telling everybody here now. Uh, all twenty eight people. Twenty eight. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing a movie. Uh, I booked this movie. Um, I'm going to Colombia to shoot a, to shoot a movie, uh, this Vietnam War movie in in, in, in Colombia, and that was my dream role to play a, a soldier, um, like a, a, a specific kind of soldier. And then that was the role that I booked right before the quarantine. So like after that, after the quarantine, so I got to go to Colombia for like a month and a half, shoot this movie, which I'm really excited about. But um, that's what's up, man. That's a sign. Congratulations. Thank you, bro. And that answers um, Alex Madrid's question. My boy, shout out to him. He asked what I was doing next. I'm shooting that movie after this whole thing is over. Yeah, when we can finally get back outside. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So you made your own dream role. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. Don't get no better than that. And that, how's that going? How, what's that looking like since, you know, everything slowed down? Where where y'all at with that? Man, I mean, it's really, it's at a standstill. The whole industry is at a standstill. So, but I feel like, um, like the more time we have to like for, for more people to see it, you know, like, um, again, like once this is over, we'll go back, we'll go back to, we'll go back to sit with Netflix and, you know, we'll, we'll dialogue it and hopefully we can grow with them and then we'll go, we'll sit with Hulu and we'll, 
see what they think about it. And I want I want I want I always wanted to go Netflix, Hulu. Um, I wanted to go Netflix, Hulu, HBO, um, um, a, a channel that 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 lacked um, like black leads the right way, like even like an AMC because AMC had AMC had Breaking Bad, and it is kind of like a show where it follows one character doing this thing and like them trying to wiggle through this system and stuff like that. So I wanted to create a show where um, just like me, a young black boy connected to like Breaking Bad. <laughs> Uh, to like that kind of character that like something that people could watch from all over and like connect to like this this you know kind of shysty used car salesman who like wants to like monopolize on anything to do with cars like in his yeah. area you know but just like this like a like a character who's just hungry for success okay all right and and, and the sizzle was great i gotta say i seen it i watched okay. it a couple times that sizzle was great i can't wait to see what come out of it Man, we, hey, it's, it's in the motion. Hey, man, when you need a writer, let me know. Man, 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 I need everybody. Look for work. I, I love to write on it. Help you, help you bring the thing to life. All right, so I seen some but, questions. Shut up. Yeah, on. before we before we get offline, for bad, that was on me. We in the broadcast. We're going to get into these questions that the people have been asking you. Then we can go ahead and close this thing on out. Uh, let's see what we cool. got. Cool. Uh, I see one right here. Kayla Fenton said, how do you maintain such a positive attitude through the trials? Um, uh, that's a good question. I honestly, um, I think, I, how do I, I want to be honest. How do I maintain being positive through trials? To be 120% with you, um, Kayla, who asked me this question, like, I went from working, like, crazy to not working much at all you know like 29 and it last year was 2019 yeah 2019 mm -hmm. like i worked at the beginning of the, huh no nah, go ahead go ahead yeah i worked the beginning of 2019 and then like i think i did like one project but like it, it's just been so slow um since then it's been like a just slow for somebody who was just like boom 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 so it's difficult to be um to be positive and to be honest we're all 22 people. I'm glad there's less people because I'm going to say this, this truth. Like, I lost confidence in in what I had for a moment. Like, I because I wasn't um, as magical as I thought I was, you know, um, as I previously was. So I feel like that it was just like God slowed everything down. And um, I've become a much better actor since the last time I was on TV. So I feel like um, that, like, you know, just booking this movie, get, doing this movie after the quarantine is over. And um, even after the quarantine and the corona slows down, like, the industry being wide open for people to come and grab them a show or grab them a lead role, I think it's going to be so many opportunities that, like, it'll open it up. But I think, like, the positivity comes from, like, um, the fact that I, be I believe in in God and I believe in, like, my purpose. I believe that, like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And the reality is... All right. The reality yeah. is that, like, for everybody listening, the reality is that, like, if... If I choose to stop acting today because it's too hard for me, then, like, people, like, I, I really believe that people die. You know what I'm saying? I think Will Smith said that, but, like, I really feel like like there are people who would die if I stopped. Like, if there's, like, a little boy that's waiting to hear my voice or, like, somebody on this live that's waiting to hear, like, the answer to a question, like, people would die in, like, you not doing exactly what you're called to do. So I feel like once we, like, um, like, once we know exactly what it is we're supposed to be doing and know to the extent we're supposed to be doing it, doing it too, then we know it's like, it's bigger than ourselves. It's bigger than the fact that I got to take care of my family. It's bigger than the fact that my grandma in the hood and I want to get her out of the hood. It's bigger than the fact that like my homeboys still live in the hood and it's like, I want them to come and like work with me. It's bigger than all that. It's, um, it's like the lives of, of so many people that are um, like people waiting to be inspired. Like, 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 like two years from now, like, like somebody could be doing good right now, but in two years from now, like, I have to do what I'm doing right now today to get to that moment to meet them two years from now to right. say like whatever, whatever it is that I'm gonna say to like help them change their life. Right. Right. So that's that's how I stay positive and like knowing that like it's bigger than myself and that like I'll touch other people. Well God will touch other people through me. That's deep. Yeah. Okay. You got let's see, you got one right here. Is it more beneficial to have an acting coach one on one or go to acting class? Which one do you prefer? Um, I think that um I, I and mind you, I teach at the classes, so it's like, I think that it's, for me, it's better in the class. Like, one-on-one -on -one is cool, because I do one-on-one -on -one sessions, but it's like, 
to get a chance to like watch somebody make a mistake is 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 like it's so beneficial whether we realize it or not. Like to watch somebody do something, even in school, just say now you watch somebody do that, you're like that ain't it. Then you know forever that it ain't it, you, you, and you might not do it unless you know it's, you miss it, unless that airplane just you know go by you. But like yeah. generally, you know that like that's not that's not it. When you when it's one on one coaching. Um, I think one-on-one -on -one coaching is good in its own way, you know, and it has its own benefits. But, like, I prefer the energy, being in the class. Like, every, it's more than one person who kind of see what you do, and it's like they may see things. You see things from other people. You grab characters from people. It is nobody, – nobody in the acting class is similar as much as they all want the same thing. They all have the same dream, but they're all different. So it's like, you know, even – even um, there's so many people on this on this live who've been like who've been in the book room like they wrap it up they coming in <laughs> yeah but I mean but yeah so so uh, yeah I think um, that classes are uh, that somebody said did they have an intimacy coordinator on set how was that part no they didn't um, they did not have an intimacy coordinator I just was very um, respectful and they like like and I'll tell you on the day like the girl had to have like no shirt on but it had like a little pasty right over her um. <laughs> her, her, her area and she had like pants on so like they did not have an enemy seat coordinator on set uh see that question what, i just answered that one. uh or support to have while you're chasing the dream especially starting out last question what, oh what is it what's a good job uh question is what's the ideal job or support to have while you're chasing the dream especially starting out so i guess like what do you do to support yourself first starting out what's like a good uh job for an actor Man, that's the hardest question ever. Cause like, people ask me all the time. It, it, for me, I I don't know because like, mind you, when I first started, I was working at a warehouse. I was working from like eight to like four thirty at a warehouse, and mm. then, like I just made it. Um, I just made it happen. But I feel like whatever job you could just, you just get, you just gotta make it happen. But like, I think actors should find things flexible, or like they gotta know that like they okay. Like a lot of my friends got real jobs, but they know if they get an audition. That job ain't gonna have no more. They go and they are gonna do the audition. Yeah, the yeah. I I didn't call off a few days for for an opportunity, whether it's yeah. or not. You just gotta try, man. You dedicated. That's how it matters. Yeah. So I feel like whatever way you know how to make money, like that's that's on you. I, I can't even answer that question. You never know. So um, and okay. So we are gonna wrap this thing on up, Pat. I want to say I appreciate you, man. I know we had some technical difficulties, but <laughs> I appreciate you, bro. I, Thank you so much. Like I said, I've seen you grow a lot, man. Thank I'll you. give it up to you. Like I said, Jared, Travis, Jeff and Meyer, the booking room, everybody for starting this. I'm glad to see everybody doing great. Glad to see you. I'm going to meet you out there soon. Please. I want to thank the Atlanta Actors Collective for giving uh, my podcast the platform. I think it was a great interview despite, you know what I'm saying, the, uh, the technical difficulties. We got some good questions. I think we had a conversation. Um, Shout out to the GS Acting Workshop. Shout, shout out to uh, Giovanni Samuels. Hit her up for all your acting, for your craft and business needs. And uh, shout out to all 23 people still watching this live, man. Uh, we appreciate it. Ho hopefully we can do this again with a uh, you know, better connection or whatever. And uh, Pat, is there any closing question, comments, or concerns that you want to say? Closing comments. and So the last thing I want to say is like, Love you too, bro. I see you. Um, last thing I want to say is like, at, yo, I think I was gonna put this on my Instagram, but I feel like if, like, it's it's beyond like what you look like, right? Like, it's more like you have to be more than what you look like. If it's a beautiful girl, like, like if it's a beautiful girl, the reality is that like she has the the acceptance of the entire world to know that she's beautiful. But it's more than like being beautiful. You have to be skilled. If it's the handsome dude, like, it's more than just being like, oh, I'm handsome. Like, I got it. Like, you can do work, but, like, it's about longevity. Like, how long, like, will I be able to do this? Because the reality is that, that it's, like, what also keeps me, keeps me up in spirits is the fact that, like, I know that, like, I just haven't worked in, a, in, a, in like, a couple, you know, in, in some months. But, like, I, mm -hmm. I did a, a, that I'm skilled enough to when the moment comes, I can hold and carry something for a long way. So I feel like everybody should focus on, like, the skill part first, like, and if you know who you are, like if you really know who you are, then you can make better decisions. I know that Patrick Walker, I know that, that for me, 
I know um, I do things a little off, off kilter. Like it's a little, I already do things differently. So I just, mm -hmm. I just trust my own gut. I know that like, hey, like um, my brain, like I know how my brain works. So I know that like, how, like when I need to press something and when I could just relax and just greatness would just flow naturally. Or when I need to like try to channel greatness. So I feel like um, just for everybody, like it's important to know like if for acting like who you are and like what message you're trying to send out. Cause like every role for the rest of your career is generated based off of like what you're trying to say. Denzel is, is my favorite, but like from the very beginning, like it has always been of like presenting like, um, like African-American men in like a, in a certain light. And he's like, carry that same thing all the way. And like having morals and values and things that you believe in, but like know what image you want to portray. The rock is the biggest right now. Why is he the biggest? Because he is the most inspirational. He's the most, um, motivational. He has things that like we want. He has things that like we like. He has he, qualities and like like qualities that we all enjoy, and he puts those qualities on screen. You know, um, so I just think it's important to know who you are. Like, Looking at that helps. Yes, that helps. <laughs> That's that though. Thank you, Pat. Every time, every time I need you, bro, you come through, man. You're an inspiration. Come on, bro. Appreciate you. Love you, bro, you. forever. All right, bro. Thank you, everybody, for watching, too. Thank my boy, you. do I see you, my boy? Everybody. Follow the Patrick Walker on Instagram. Follow uh, Bean Paul ENT for more podcasts and skits on the way. We all working. We all working. We all working. And shout out to the Atlanta Atlas Collective one more time for the platform. Thank you all so much. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Peace and blessings to all. This is another. This has been another episode of So You Got Cloud, the podcast. We are out. This is dope, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's all right. Oh, and I don't. Yeah, I can't be working so hard. They're supporting the couples out of these moves. Let me hear snooze. Never for me to get up. Get bust. I ain't got time to be stuck. You've been discovered, but it's so many tickets up. It's been an honor, the blessing. I don't believe in luck. I'm ready for my son, yeah. And I dare you to get in my way. Cause I'm ready for my son, yeah. So you got clout. So you got clout. I'm on now. I'm on now. I'm on now. Say, so you got clout.